What is up YouTube? It's Mountain Metal Anthony here with another one for you. Today I'm on site. I'm back with the carnival people. I'm doing a little work for them, but I'm not gonna show you the job today. I don't really have time to film it. But I did have a moment while I'm waiting for my coffee to get made to kind of go over a few thoughts I had and a few mistakes I made when I first got into this business. So I'm gonna start you right off. Mistake number one, being cheap with tools. I was very cheap to start. I thought, I, you know, this Harbor Freight grinder is gonna do me fine. But you'll notice I rep a lot of tools now for free, mind you. None of these people pay me. Like Metabo, their grinders, Evo, the chop saw, and their circular saw. If you can see it back there, that thing's a huge time saver as well. I'll probably do a review on that at some point. Um, and then, you know, luxury items. You know, I, this is a hard job. Make it a little easier on yourself. The Oxbox coffee maker. I love that thing. That's the first mistake I made was just being cheap tool wise. Um, I always spend a little money on the engine drive. My old one was a Bobcat, so that, that was a pretty decent machine. Did break down quite a few times, but no complaint. But I have my fair share of uh, trick tools and things you don't normally see on a mobile welder's rig. And I learned that from a couple of people off of Instagram. Uh, Bezantine, or however you say his name, Nick Bezates, maybe. I don't know. That dude up in Oregon. Um, that's great with pipe. That dude right there taught me that do not be cheap with your tooling. You know, he's one of the most successful dudes on Instagram if you watch uh, work volume wise. And he's not cheap with his tooling. There's a reason for that. You need to watch these people, these successful people on Instagram. That brings me to point number two. Watch your peers. It's, it's very simple. What are they doing different from you? You know, I use the example of Nick um, and his whole setup. He was the guy who inspired me to buy a freaking uh, utility bed truck. I messaged the dude a few times about it before I did it. That's why I'm so glad to hear from some of you guys because I was given a lot of knowledge from these other guys. I'm glad to be able to share what I know and what I've learned. So, Number two, watch your peers and don't be afraid to ask them questions. If you want to know something that you think I might know that you don't, shoot me a message. I'll answer you. And that brings me to point number three. You know, you have to treat other people the way you want to be treated. Okay? So if someone's treating you nasty, you're going to be less likely to give them the results they are looking for. Right? So... Keep this in mind when you're doing business. Treat your customers, your vendors, employees if you have them, I don't, subcontractors. Treat them all with kindness and that's gonna go a long way. So point number three, treat everyone with kindness. Let's see if my coffee's done here. Oh yeah, we've got a brewing now. We've got a brewing. All right, now point number four. Point number four, things I kinda wish I knew before I started really any sort of business. I had the advantage of being in business prior to this one. I owned an inflatables company where like I'd show up and like your kid wanted a water slide or whatever for their birthday. Um, I just sold that company this year. So I already kind of had some of these basics down. But I know a lot of you are getting into this without any knowledge of business. Those cicadas are loud, aren't they? Anyway, that's a Florida thing. I don't know if they're, I know in the South they got them, but here we got them. We got them. But anyway, yeah, so these are just things I wish I knew when I was getting into business. Um, another thing is you're a salesman. That's right. You're a salesman. If you own your own welding service or any sort of service, you're not just a welder. You're a salesman because you have to actively sell your work. Some people aren't always going to agree with your price and you don't just want to blow these people off. You want to make them see why your price is what it is. You need to show them the value in your work. It's not like plumbing or an electrician or a lot of other trades because those people, their value is kind of implied or it's a service you need right then and there. Often welding is not a service you need right then and there. You know, your house is flooding. You're going to call the plumber and pay him whatever he asks 
in order to fix your house from flooding, right? You know, but you break a hinge on your trailer and you don't really need the trailer that day, you know, just an example. You know, you might wait a couple few days. But, you know, so there's the big difference in this industry. You're going to need to play salesman. And that might mean, you know, taking something down from a certain type of build spec, maybe a customer had in mind. You know, let's say there's an instance where somebody wants you to resheet their dump bed. Here's a perfect example. And they're dead set on you using quarter inch. But quarter inch is double, if not more, the price of eighth inch. And honestly, in most cases, like for landscaping companies, eighth inch is going to do just fine. That's what it rolled out of the factory with. So a sheeting over of it with eighth inch is a perfectly sellable job that you can with, you know, with, with some real, I don't know what you call the word, real assurity stand behind and say, yeah, this is going to do the job you want it to do. That's part of this industry. And a lot of people miss that. Point number five, and this is another thing that, that really helped me elevate my game. Overstock all of your consumables. Overstock your rods, overstock your cutoff wheels, your oxygen, your acetylene, your 7525, your argon. You should have two or three bottles of argon. You should have two or three bottles of 7525. You should have like four bottles of oxygen and you should have at least two bottles of, of acetylene. I say four bottles because the smaller bottles are two to one uh, bottle of acetylene in my experience, if you're using the oxygen and acetylene correctly and you're setting your, your pressures right. So always overstock on anything that you're gonna consume, you know, besides like fuel and water, overstock it. Keep it in the house. Um, I have at least 100 extra flap discs, at least 100 extra cutoff wheels um, at all times. And then like three or four extra wire wheels and then of course I just order the stuff as I need it. So I see that my two extras are gone. I get on Amazon that day, the day that I took them and stocked them in the truck and I order them. It's that simple. It's gonna make you effective. It's gonna make it so that you don't have to give customers excuses like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have enough oxygen. Oh, 75, it's the weekend and the 75, 25 is out because I only got one bottle. You don't, no excuses. People don't care about your problems. They care about results. So you overstock your stuff and that's gonna be a key to your success. All right, guys, my coffee's definitely done now and I've definitely been at this a little too long, but I hope this benefits you. I hope it brings your business to the next level because remember, we are not just welders, we are businessmen, we are entrepreneurs. You're now out on your own. There is no one cutting you a paycheck. It's you cutting your own paycheck. So get out there, hit it, get some customers, do your best. I'm Melton Metal Anthony. If you love my content, smash the subscribe button, like this video. If you don't like it and you think I'm a fool, well, screw you. I'm making plenty of money over here, all right? But no, seriously, you guys have a great day, and uh, I'll catch you on the next video, okay? Thanks.